one of the things you just said that I loved was one thing I made a mistake on. Like there's, there's being able to identify that and help agents with that right now. Like there's a lot of agents that are making mistakes with that specifically. Um, and they are trying to play way above their means or, you know, whatever. Um, talk through that some more. I, I like, like directly to agents and how we can help them with that problem. Cause there's, and what they can do to not do that. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast live every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Central Center Time. Today, I got a special guest. I'm talking, I'm talking a super special guest, one of the most impressive cats in the entire insurance industry, Mr. Brandon Todd, co founder and CEO of Medicare Gurus, formerly Medigap 360 and the Insura Sales Platform. Brandon, welcome to the podcast and the YouTube channel, sir. Good to see you, Cody. Good to see you, brother. You too, man, dude. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you making time for this. I know you have a crazy busy schedule. You got a ton going on. You're super successful. You built a ton of amazing companies and I appreciate you hanging out with us today. Well, I can't, you know, be, having a chance to be part of what you're doing, man, you're revolutionary, what you're doing for the industry right now, you're kind of changing the paradigm and I want to be a part of something like that. So I, I, I'm happy to be here. I would have, I would have canceled anything for it. I love it, brother. I appreciate that. That's so good, man. Thank you. Um, and you guys are getting involved in 8% in a big way. Uh, in, 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 you're, you're a keynote speaker of ours. I've been wanting to get you on stage for a while now. Um, Insura Sales is our key headline sponsor of the entire event. Uh, it's going to be an unbelievable deal. I'd love for people to really get to know your story. I appreciate you and your support and everything you're doing. Um, who was Brandon Todd? Uh, let's talk like back in, let's, let's go back. Let's, let's go back to like high school and college, man. Like who was Brandon back in the day? Uh, high school and college, man. I didn't know you'd go there. Um, burned out baseball, st baseball star who had a bad shoulder trying to find his way in life, chasing girls around the country, had a yes. girlfriend I chased around the country. Didn't know what I wanted to do when I was growing up. Um, you know, didn't have the whole thing where I went to college and knew what I wanted to do. I, I often joke that I spent more time in college figuring out what majors I wanted to change to than I did doing my homework. Uh, <laughs> I ended up going to four schools, but made one of them twice. Uh, you know, I just couldn't figure out where I was wanting to go. Um, you know, and when my girlfriend and I broke up, uh, I went home. Uh, as I had been doing in the summers and started cold calling insurance for my dad, who was an insurance agent. Yeah. Uh, and I decided in 1997 uh, to, I was wasting my time in college. So why not go home and uh, get my license? Actually, I could make $1,600 a month if I sold just a little bit. I did the math and man, I was making $300 a month uh, in my college job. And so I thought I was going to be rocking the world, man. And I didn't grow up with a rich family or anything like that. So I saw my dad struggling through the insurance business. He finally got stable by that time. But wow. uh, yeah, $1,600 a month so I could figure out what I want to do when I grow up. And uh, when I figure that out, I'll let you know. Yeah, man, dude. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we have that in common where your dad was an insurance agent, right? You grew up in the industry. Did you know you would want to join the insurance industry later in life? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I, I actually had, when my dad hopped from sales career to sales career all these years uh, when I was growing up, I mean, when I was a little boy, we called it, it said he was selling boxes. What that meant is he was going business to business. He had a van and it had all these different things. We just called them boxes, but they had kitchen knives and pots and pans and whatever they could sell. It was the old traveling salesman game. I was actually born while they were on the road going from city to city. So I was, they were in Pocatello, Idaho, the week I was born. I lived there for a week wow. and then moved, moved to Washington. Um, but that's the kind of family I grew up in. And I'd always heard that insurance, and it was something my dad said when I was like eight, nine, 10, 11, it's like insurance is something that people do when they can't get another job. Yeah. Uh, anyone will, at that time, anyone will hire an insurance agent. And we all know why now, because they put people on, on straight commission, put them out. They don't have to know how to sell anything. And yes. if they sell something, it's good for them. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of had a negative stigma on it. My dad started going into it. And then I said, well, at least someone can be successful. Mm. Uh, and by successful, he was making a living. Uh, as I was growing up. So yeah. it wasn't a dream of mine. And like I said, when in college, I just came back and I said, you know, 
I can make 1600 bucks a month while I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, so. did, did you, did you play, um, did you play college baseball? Junior college. Junior, junior college, college baseball. I love yeah. It. So my sophomore year, I threw my shoulder out. I couldn't, I went from throwing the ball, you know, mid eighties to like 60 and it hurt. Woo. Uh, so they moved me to second base and, uh, and then there was a guy that was just so much better than me. Uh, we'll talk about him one day, the lessons he taught me, but, uh, yeah. I, it got to where I just couldn't play anymore. I had to find yeah. something else. Yeah. Um, have you always been a very, co- I mean, it, you strike me as like a very competitive driven individual. What would you say to that? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I'm very driven. I'm very driven, but my, my drive goes towards, uh, having success, mm. um, for everything. My drive is for when everything works, like anything I'm putting together, like I don't care what I get out of it um, as long as it works. That's my motivation that it's a win win. Everyone works. Every, all The tide lifts every boat. That's, That's my internal motivation. Now, in order to do that, of course, I have to succeed and I'm not going to not succeed in doing that. Uh, but if it becomes a win lose situation, I won't play. I yes. won't play. Um, which actually, when I picked up tennis later in life, uh, one of my coaches identified that as one of my psychological hurdles. Is mm-hmm. my It was hard for me to beat someone else. I'd always grown wow. up in team sports, but like when it came down to it, I would choke sometimes, and it was hard for me to, to close the deal in a win-lose situation. Uh, and then I had a coach, he, he just told me, he goes, sometimes the best thing you can do for someone is beat them, beat them six love, six love. <laughs> Because that shows them where they are. They need to know that. You can't Correct. let them win when you're better than them. Yeah, wow. that makes sense. I mean, y- you would tear me up in tennis. I know that. <laughs> Maybe that's not for, now. That's for dang sure. Yeah. I, I, I mean, who, who would win on a golf course, though, me or you? Oh, you for sure. Really? Oh, I would, I would win the highlight reel. I'd win the highlight reel. At the end of the day, I would have the best shot of the day. It would be amazing, and everyone would go, wow, but I'd be like 50 over par. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, That's we, would have a bunch, we would have a bunch of fun. Uh, probably in business. Yeah, we would have a ton of fun. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you guys are listening, man. I'm telling you, this, this dude has a ton of fun. He's a good guy. He cares about the industry. He's doing a lot of special stuff. He's building a lot of special stuff behind the scenes. Um, he's just, he's just. I mean, the dude's committed um, to helping the industry in a big way. What is do 8% and everything that we've got going on there? Uh, can you repeat the question and cut out a second? Yeah. What, what, what's got you really intrigued um, and what, what got your attention to really get involved with 8% and all the stuff that we got going on there? You know, when I first saw what you guys were doing, you and a couple other guys in the industry on YouTube and internet marketing circles, um, I just said, finally, I said, finally, um, I was hanging out. I don't know if you know about the, uh, the evolution of the internet and information product marketing and things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, name a lot of names, but I was out in that in the early 2000s. Uh, mm. I was doing internet marketing for my patient assistance program company. Uh, yeah. And I turned that into the uh, Medicare supplement marketing. I was the first one to do Medicare supplement insurance uh, online and wow. been the basic call center model. Did that Launched that site, Medigap360.com, in 2006, December 2006. Ramped it up 2007-8. But, you know, back then, I was doing a lot of the Internet marketing things, and it was just way too early. Uh, And and what people were having success in Internet marketing to, it was stuff that they controlled, things that they could do themselves. Yes. Uh, You know, I can can create an information product, and I can sell that to you. I can sell a coaching program. I can take you to an event or a seminar or something like that. Uh, But to sell insurance, uh, that's not a product that you control, that's government regulated, that has a whole bunch of corporations that have all this oversight on it. I mean, that's a lot harder thing to do. Mm. And to to grab a following with there when there wasn't much of a following and there wasn't a lot of infrastructure for that. So long story short, I see you guys. I crawled up under a rock, lived in the Virgin Islands for a little while, um, wow. worked on some other things, uh, kept my technology platform going, uh, and my big dream, which is to change the industry through software. Um, but I kept that going. I come back and I, you know, hey, have you seen this Cody Askins guy? Have you seen this 8%? And mm-hmm. I went and looked a little bit, and I said, they're doing it. They're finally doing it uh, because the Internet solves everything. The internet yes. solves everything in this insurance business. And I hope that's the conversations we can have. 
uh, because the past of the insurance business has always been information held back. Mm. When, the, when the information age uh, is here and we can show we can lift the veil on the on the insurance business, show how things work and empower the little guy, basically, yes. to be able to perform and build his business. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's it's fun how it's it's uh, catching hold. I mean, one of the things I want to go back to that you mentioned um, is about how you when you launched uh, Metagap 360, you know, and your website and everything you're doing and the call center and everything like, you, you know, most people weren't doing telus Medicare telesales back in 06. Like that's that's, you know, that's incredible. Um, that's, you know, 16 years ago. Right. Like that's really impressive. Right. How big did that thing get or has it gotten from a volume standpoint if you could use premium or apps or sales or whatever right what 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 were families lives covered whatever like what number i want to get everybody's attention really quick before we dive into this because you you've you've pulled off some incredible stuff like what's a what's a number of how good this business has gotten well at, at our peak we were selling about 14 million in annual premium med subs um wow. we had about 40 agents um we had some some down downfalls from there and I got over over leveraged and so it didn't it didn't scale the way I wanted it to uh because I made a lot of bad decisions mm -hmm. uh and that's that's 10 more interviews about that sure um but I'd like the ones I'd like to do because I want people to learn from everything I've learned and everything I've made a mistake from too because yep. one person only has to learn the lesson and that's the cool thing about the internet um you know we can share that and people can learn and and know those things but yeah. Uh, you know, so to go back, I mean, I was recovering from leg surgery. I had a, I'd built a company uh, that started as a lead company for my, uh, you know, we did direct mail leads, went, went to houses, drove a two hour radius from our house, uh, kitchen table sales. Uh, we had a small agency. I'd moved to, uh, I left my agency in East Texas, moved to Austin, rebuilt another one, had about six or seven agents working in it, uh, which is pretty much all you could do with the direct mail run in that circular area if you didn't want to over mail people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we said, hey, you know, we can get on a direct mail piece, I can get a 6% response if I lead with prescription savings over um, over Medicare supplement savings. And, you know, me, my dad and I, we had built this agency and we go out, save someone $20 a month on their Medicare supplement. And they think we're, we're the greatest. I mean, start out in East Texas where most everyone was living on six, $700, $800 a month. Social security income, $20 yes. a month was really big, but over half of them were sitting there and they pull out all their prescriptions and say, well, I spent about 200, 300, $400 a month on these. Is there anything you can do to help me with that? Mm. Uh, this was 97, 98, 99, 2000, that area. There was no wow. Medicare Part D. There was a J plan, not a J plan. There was a old non-standardized ARP policy that, that covered some on prescriptions. And if you maxed it out, you would almost get your money back. Uh, <laughs> you know, and if you didn't max it out, you know, they got to keep the money. So, I mean, it wasn't a good deal for anyone. There's nothing we could do. So I found out about patient assistance programs. Long story short, you can look at my company, Prescription Lifeline, that I'm no longer involved with. We help people get over a billion dollars in medications in the next uh, 15 years. Uh, but, you know, we what we did is we integrated over 270 some pharmaceutical company sponsored patient assistance programs, uh, brought them into, you know, into workflow scenarios. We had a database that holds like over 180 different ways that they do business. Uh, that yep. we kept track of. And it could basically, bottom, long story short, help them get their medications on an ongoing basis. If you do these things that the software tells you to do exactly at the time we tell you to do it, you will get your medicine on an ongoing basis for free. Um, and awesome. we took full responsibility for it. That's uh, history on that's really something. But that took off. Uh, it was first called Senior Care Benefits Network. Uh, and, and later turned into Select Care Benefits Network when uh, Part D came out. We had to go to the under 65 market. But yep. that took off. And by time 2006 rolls around, we're doing whiteboards every day, trying to figure out how to integrate all these companies. And I had to learn software development, got better at Internet marketing, doing all this. And we came back and I'm having surgery in December 2006. I had surgery on my ankle. I'm at my parents' house in their spare bedroom recovering. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do this for the insurance guys. And mm. so I write Medigap. I get the domain Medigap360.com and I write some articles and some pages and I put a little squeeze page on it. Uh, and 
within by by the next December, I'm getting 300 leads a day organically for free. I'm ahead of Medicare.gov and the search engines. Uh, and the leads are just popping in, popping in. Uh, we we killed all, you know, we were doing search uh, like AdWords and stuff, stuff like that, but we didn't need it. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to solve the access because I got four agents. I got four agents. So what am I going to do with 300 leads and four agents? I mean, a good agent uses, you know, a really good agent who knows what they're doing doesn't use as many leads. They'll use seven, eight, nine, ten a day if they're good. Uh, make four sales, but you know, if you give them th that many, they'll just dial through them real quick looking for the deal and they won't sell anything. So yep. I'm trying to grow as fast as possible. I realized my first, you know, I'm the first one in this market and everyone's talking about the baby boomers are turning 65. In a few years, the baby boomers are going to turn 65. This was before the people in insurance were doing it, but the, the, you know, the big money was talking about those things. I said, man, I'm first, I'm here, I'm going to win. I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a trillionaire. Yes. Uh, so I started building everything for scale. I, I, I took all the, um, all the off the shelf CRMs. We looked at Salesforce and FusionSoft and all these other ones that were there back then. And I said, these don't do what I want them to do. Mm. They do a bunch of stuff, but not what I want them to do. Cause I want to carry, I want to feed the agent what he needs when he needs it and integrate all the things into and focus it around the agent, not the software. And so we started building our own stuff. Um, and that's, that's the Genesis. That's the Genesis of Medigap 360 and getting started with that. That's incredible, man. 300 leads a day organically for literally just from post posting content. And, and you understood that wave back then. I mean, was this back, this was back in 06? Oh, uh, seven. It was December seven? of 06 when I launched Medigap360.com and then throughout 07 and then, you know, it really started taking off in 08. That's unbelievable. What 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 um what told you to go do that? Like buy the domain, put up content, build out articles, and just get leads that way. Like most people, like you you you're. I mean, naturally, I don't know if you. I mean, I'm sure you realize this now, but you are a visionary that looks ahead to the future to do things that people haven't done yet in the space. You're doing that with insure sales. You're doing that with everything else you get going on. Um, you did that with prescription lifeline. Like that's just stuff that you've done. Um, how did you know to do that back then? Man. And if I could say this, like, I hope we can, I can say something that's uh, cuttable for this, because if there's something I want to say to every entrepreneur out there is don't look at anything except the problem of the person on the ground. Mm. Whether it, whether it's you know I'm looking at a I'm looking at a client who has three hundred dollars in medications and doesn't know how to afford them and I find one search term the internet was new there but I found the search term patient assistance programs and I said by God a lot of people there's going to be money and success if we can help them and we're going to help a lot of people so yeah focus let's get it done uh, for everything else it's you know what what can we do to feed the the professional insurance agent. Uh, the professional insurance agent has a thousand problems. And if you look at where he is at, at that point, when he's talking to a customer, what does he need? When does he need it? What is his problems? All that everything in an organization, including your mind first as the entrepreneur has to be focused on that interaction between the customer and the agent. Mm -hmm. How do you get really good agents talking to really good qualified customers and feed that as much as possible? Is so, I mean, that's it. So by you ask, how do I see that? It's uh, my, my brain first says, how should it be? What do I want to see? What solves this problem whenever I see something? And then just don't believe it's not possible because everything's possible. Mm. That's good. It's so good. It's, it sounds, I mean, it's so unique, but if everybody, everybody that has call centers and teams and, you know, what offices and all this stuff focused on, trying to find the best people talking to the best people like they would weed out a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of vendors and all this stuff. You know, I mean, that's what you did to really start to scale something. What, what did you do with all the excess leads back then? You know what? Um, a lot of them went to waste. I finally found a few people who would buy them. Uh, that partnership worked uh, for about six months and then I didn't like where it was going. Uh, mm -hmm turned down a lot of money to keep that going, but I saw the uh, outside lead industry starting to churn leads and it was starting to happen even back then. Um, so that ended pretty quick. Uh, what I was trying to do was just scale up agency. 
Yep. Uh, try to get as many agents as I can. Um, and we can talk about why that's a big problem and how having that amount of opportunity in front of you uh, and feeling feeling like you have to live up to the opportunity rather than playing within yourself and what you're capable of, how mm -hmm. that can be a big problem. I think if I, there was one thing I would say that I made a mistake on, it was trying to be too big, too quick, mm -hmm. trying to go beyond, you know, what I thought was possible now uh, without knowing what I was getting into. Uh, so it was, a, it was, a, it was, it was a cool problem to have. Uh, but in the end, you just had to realize, man, a lot of this stuff's just going to go to waste yeah. uh, because I can't do it right. And when I tried to do it right, I made too many mistakes. Let's talk through that because that you mentioned, like one of the things you just said that I loved was one thing I made a mistake on. Like mo there's, there's being able to identify that and help agents with that right now. Like there's a lot of agents that are making mistakes with that specifically. Um, and they are trying to play way above their means or, you know, whatever. Um, Talk through that some more, I, I, like like directly to agents and how we can help them with that problem because there's and what they can do to not do that. You know, if you're focused, if you're focused on what's possible, and you should be, yeah, uh, you should always be thinking about what's possible, but you have to be realistic about where you are on the ground, you know. Can you sell 22 policies in a day? The answer is no. It's physically impossible for one single person to actually do that. Mm -hmm. So there are limits of what you can do. But then if you think about it, don't say it's impossible. Say, I can't do it with my current capabilities. Now, if I had a team of four people feeding me, cutting through all the red tape and getting people interested in all of that, getting halfway through, or I had online education that walked people through an educational process and fed them to me at that point, And I was able to do the important things myself in that period of time, then maybe that 22 a day would be possible. Yeah. Uh, but when you're first starting, it's not that. So it's, it's just, I would just say like, know where you are. Um, never forget what's possible. But as I, as I, I do this with my leaders, I say here, when we're planning out our, our company and our vision and all that, I start out with, okay, where are we going to be at the end? What's it going to look like? Let's imagine we have um, all the money that God has, all the opportunity and abilities that God has. And he's going to give them all to us. Yeah. All right. So God wants it to happen. So what's it going to look like? And we draw that up and we try to get as specific as we can about it. And then we draw down where we are now and what we have and what we do. And then we kind of, the, the funnel gets from the bottom to the top. It gets more and more blurry. So you start down really crystal clear where you are right now. This is what I have. This is what I'm capable of. This is what I can do. And then you go, okay, the next step would be this. And kind of the next step would be there. And then it'll probably be okay. And then, da, da, da. and in the end, it's going to be great and wonderful and beautiful. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, because you know that if you try to do 10 things at once, you're going to fail on each step going over. You go to the next step, you're going to, you're going to get kicked back because you're trying to do too much. So take one step at a time and with all that you're training, everything else, make sure that you're better off tomorrow than you were today, no matter how. And that's how you stack good days on top of another uh, day in, day out. And over decades, that becomes phenomenal. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Um, why, why health insurance? Why Medicare? Because that's what dad sold. <laughs> that's a quick and easy answer. No, I mean, I'm serious. Like it was something that was there. My dad knew that my dad started out. He, he started with physicians, mutual insurance in 1984 as a wow. captive agent. Uh, this was back when the insurance companies still sold their own products a lot more than they do today, but they would set up all these regional offices. So dad worked out of the Houston office. There's a guy there named Larry. Uh, and his job was to hire as many insurance agents as possible. I uh, later found out because insurance companies, it's easier to hire an agent and hope they sell something than it is to sell a product. Yeah. So they would hire as many people as possible. So my dad got caught into that, said, hey, come on in. We'll put it on the whiteboard. If you sell this many, you'll make this much. It's going to be great. And then they get, and then he got his license. They handed him the applications and the brochures, outlines of coverage. And they said, remember, uh, three signatures, two checks. <laughs> Go get them, Tiger. <laughs> that was his training. Well, my dad being in the in the uh, 
door to door sales business, he started knocking on businesses. Hey, you know, anyone on Medicare, you know, anyone on 65, you got anyone here? And he went to quit a couple months later and his range manager goes, well, we do have a lead allowance. Could I send you a list of names of people over 65 and their phone number? And my dad was like, that can exist. Mm. And so they sent it to him. And that was the beginning of me. You know, he worked in a home office across the hall from my childhood bedroom. And so I would actually, I remember in the summer, just waking up in the morning, walking in and dad's cold calling this list and all that. But um, so he went from not knowing what a lead was, how to get a list of names uh, to, you know, where he had a, you know, uh, probably close to six figure income in a wow. period of time, uh, residual income uh, on Medicare. And he had learned the ins and outs of that. He had to he had went through some problems with that carrier uh, where he lost a lot of his renewals. Uh, he was only 50 percent vested when they made it basically where it's impossible for him to do business. To help me learn, you know, be careful who you, who's uh, who you give your power to. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and he had a setback and he became independent. And I came along around that time right after he became independent, helping him cold call in the summers. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, but to start over and, you know, we're interviewing a lot of agents right now for our, for our Cedar Park, Austin, Texas, uh, Telesales Center. And this is what we're talking to them about. You know, where do you start in the insurance business? And my advice to everyone is around someone else who's very successful. If you have to, if you have to sweep the floors in their office, find someone who's successful, get with them, get attached to them, because there's so many layers of stacks of all this stuff that no one actually understands that makes someone successful. You just got to get on that way. You got to get on that way yeah. uh, around someone who can train you and in something that's already working. And I know from the other side of it, like, something works and you think it's you, but then when it quits working, you got to take that credit too. And then you start trying to do new things and they don't work. Yeah. Well, I mean, you then you're like, wait, I thought I could make anything work. I thought I was successful. Why yeah. didn't it work? And it's a mystery. When you have success, write it, hold it out, attach to people who are successful. Mm. Love it. You, you, you mentioned earlier, there were some key mistakes. This is really, this is phenomenal, by the way. I appreciate what you're sharing. And, and, and there's some, there's some definite, extremely good nuggets for those that are really paying attention and taking notes today. Like some of the best nuggets I've ever seen. Um, when you talk about some of the biggest mistakes that you made back when you were doing 14, really growing a company and scaling a company with 40 reps to over 14 mil a year in Medicare supplement, um, what were some of those or one of those that we can all learn from that you've picked up? Yeah, that's, that's what's unique about me. I, I look back and all I see is mistakes. Um, mm. Trying to, trying to grow too fast, um, losing control of what you're doing. Um, mm. You know, trusting the wrong people, trusting the wrong people, Ooh. not, but, I could sum it up to, th I'll sum it up to this. Do not believe that anyone in the insurance business is more important than the professional agent on the phone or sitting face to face with a customer. Wow. Um, the CEO of an insurance company can make a hundred million dollars a year. He probably can't do what you're doing and you're not going to build. He can't. I mean, I've had like a lot of vice presidents and other you know, uh, ex unless he started in the insurance business, unless he was an agent at some point, he can't do it. It's so hard to become successful in insurance and learning all those things you have to learn to make those sales automatic and routine. If you think that anyone, because they have a degree or an MBA or they worked at IBM or Dell or wherever employer that you, and they ran 500 person call center, if you think they know what they're talking about, you're wrong. If you listen to them, on something that you built, you're going to make a mistake. If you're an entrepreneur, you have your own sales agency, that you're just doing your own personal sales and it's working, don't ask much advice from other people unless they've been in your shoes or are close to you. If you're building a business you got some, and it's working, it's because of the things you've put together. And no one else, you can't hire anyone else who's going to understand that. Mm. Uh, so though you might have to hire a CFO or, a, you know, a, a accounting firm or something like that, cause that's a different skill. The more you can bring people up from within and the higher quality of people that you let in your door, that's the other biggest thing. Don't let anyone in. That's not that you don't love. 
Um, you know, and if you can raise them up from within, uh, the better off you are because they come in, uh, you know, right now the evolution of where I'm at is I have a single career path in my call, call centers. So you start out, you start out working under an agent, you start working out as an apprentice, uh, and you work there for a while until that, that mentor tells you that you're good to work on your own as a senior agent or as an agent, then you can become a senior agent. From there, you have choices to go to mentor or not, but there's one career path if you're going to be on the sales floor. Wow. Uh, you have to start there, and then you can go up, and then only from there will we hire executives um, and, and bring people in there. Because if I bring in an executive from some other company uh, that comes in here and tells me what he did somewhere else, my experience has shown me, and I, I've risen and fallen several times, they will mess it up because they don't understand. And unless they stop, there's a few people who will stop and spend six months or a year trying to learn what you're doing and become a good student. But if they come in trying to give you what they know without trying to understand what's working, you can you can lose. And I think I'd be a hundred have a hundred million dollars more in my bank if I hadn't done that a couple times. Wow. That's a bold statement. It's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Jeez. Um, outside of being a visionary and just staying ahead of the curve, than you know, being ahead of most people in the way you think and seeing what's going to happen and what's happening, and you, you know, you've been around the space. Um, I also think of you as someone that is really good at scaling companies. Um. What have you learned when it comes to scaling? Like if someone has a company, they're an entrepreneur, maybe they're by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing well, they're earning hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, whatever, but they're doing it all. It's all on their shoulders. Like you see all those people all the time, probably talk to them all the time too. And they want to really scale something like you have that's bigger than just them. What advice could you give them? Um, I'll focus it on, I'll focus on the independent insurance, the individual insurance agent trying to grow up because, uh, what I'll, what I'll talk about with that, that'll capture people will resonate in wherever they fit in on that. But if you're, if you're out there and you're, uh, learning how to sell insurance, uh, and you, if you want to learn to sell insurance and you want to sell insurance, you have your stable lead program, you have the thing that takes to sell insurance forever. Uh, and that's all you want to ever do forever. You don't need a whole lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, I mean, you do need discipline, but there's a way you can do it. And it kind of revolves around you. Uh, and so you, you know how to manage yourself and your routines and the things that matter. Um, you know, if you want to build a agency or later on an enterprise, then you, you don't, you know, what all <laughs> It's cuteness, but if you'll forgive me, but you stop being a salesman and start being a scalesman. Because there's three levels of here. You have you have salesman, sales, sales team, and sales force. Now, if you're a salesman, you can probably get a buddy who sells with you. And you know, there's a lot. That's pretty much most of the agencies in the world. There's three or four guys, they know guys and gals, they know each other. Uh he does what he does and do what I do. We kind of know each other and we help each other out and all of that. Um, a salesperson can become a sales team, but he'll never become a sales force unless he has a certain disciplines at the very beginning. Yes. Uh, so for instance, I had to learn to be a scalesman when I first started business. And what that means to me is I'm doing my behaviors. I'm making my behaviors and my actions, my routines. Everything that I do comes under scrutiny to be a replicatable uh, thing. So I'm not just winging it, even though I'm good enough to wing it with a client. I can, you know, my dad used to joke, he'd say, sit him down at the kitchen table, do all these right things. I go in, he wouldn't even tell him to turn the TV off in the living room, walk out with apps. Uh, he's like, well, I'm good enough. I can do that. <laughs> but then he got in slumps and he had to go back to the basics and stuff like that. But, uh, that's being a salesperson. You can get away with it. Yeah. But then if you want to get better, you have to learn how to do the same thing every time. Uh, the more routine I can get where I can say the exact same things, I can go through the presentation the same way. I can do the same, you know, we do a thing called a, um, I'll, I'll talk about technique another time, but we do certain things to, to transition in the close of the deal, certain stick techniques after, nice. you know, on the phone and afterwards, you do all of those things correctly uh, and you do them every time to where they become nothing but habit. Now, if you're doing that yourself, 
Now this guy comes along that your body wants to do something. You have something to teach. You're not like, hey, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an unconscious competent, but we can go out and sell some stuff. And yeah, we got one. Yay. Great. Um, yeah. You know, you'll hit a certain ceiling with that. But if you teach him, look, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And we do it exactly this way. Then you start having not only predictable results for yourself. And even when you're feeling sick, you could still sell something because it's so routine. Sure. Um, you know, but you'll get it for him. And then the next guy and the next guy. And if now you have a team that does things in a replicatable way, we have a thing that we do that works. And we know that if we do this thing, it works. We all add our own personality and uniqueness to it. It's not reading a script like a robot, yeah. um, but it is a method of how we do things. Uh, now we can turn that into a sales force because the people on that team who want to, um, you know, who want to come out and have their own team and they want to build off of that, uh, they can, you know, they have something to teach and that what they teach there is congruent with what everyone else is doing. And now you have a whole organization that's focused around a certain methodology, a certain core values, certain way they treat customers, the way they do it, that anytime there's a problem, you don't have to run around trying to diagnose. And there's not a lot of he said, she said, and flipping around and having to play detective to figure out what's going on. You simply just come in and say, where on the script are you having a problem? You know, when, when you answered the phone, did you answer it this way? You know, whatever it is, did you do the stick technique in, during the cool down? Um, you know, it, you get to where it's that simple. It's like, no, I couldn't. Well, you're going to have to start doing these things. Or how can I improve the way you're doing these things? Um, so the most important thing is have a method that you use and that your team uses. It doesn't have to be exact, uh, but it has to have loose rails as the skeleton. You, you know, the personality fills in the, it's like framing the house. You frame yeah. the house of the organization and then, you know, the person picks out his own sinks and his own walls and pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. Does that help? Dude, that's, that's so helpful. That's good, man. That's awesome. Um, I, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do something live at some point. Cause I bet we'd be getting, we would be getting a ton of questions if this was actually live right now, by the way. Let's do uh, it. Yeah. A ton. Um, and I, I want to keep, I'm going to have you back on in the near future. Cause I want to talk technique next time like you're talking now because i know that you when it comes to phone sales i bet you would hold your own against anybody and be able to help agents as much as anybody too which is really cool um, and that's what people need man you know what i mean they're, they're they're moving into virtual sales a lot um you mentioned agency and then enterprise um talk through the difference there i think you said like hey you become an agency then you become an enterprise is that how you said it yeah so you know if you remember you know, uh, well, I said sales force. You know, you become a, 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 a salesperson, a sales team, and a sales force. Yep. Uh, then you can kind of become an enterprise. When you have a sales force, that can take on multiple levels. And then that's when you really start getting into it's not just about us sales guys anymore. We got to have some, you know, some people who understand accounting and technology and all the other stuff. Ah, <laughs> yes. Multi location stuff and all of that. Yeah. Um, that's when you really become um, something that's really hard. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and less fun than just having a sales team for sure. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so I, I consider for when I'm teaching this, I consider a sale, a salesperson to be a, a single person, a sales team to be up to five, six people and a sales force to be more than that. Uh, mm -hmm. and everything above that. And the, and the, the real thing is, is without being, having the scalable disciplines, you can always move up one level, but you're not going to be able to move up the second. And so if you learn when people are building a business, I've been through it a, I don't know, more times than I wish, but you start doing really good and then you hit a certain point and we call them break points where you just start crashing because to get beyond that, it takes a whole different skill set than what it took you to get there. And for people to learn that is very, very difficult. Um, so what I try to teach people to do is start doing things in the beginning mm -hmm. the right way so that you can just cruise right through those break points and scale, scale rapidly. Yes. Um, if you have those skills that you're going to need to learn two steps ahead and you start it now, you're, you're going to be okay when it comes in. Uh, you're going to be suited to handle the challenges at least. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, that just have an agency to where, you know, you, you're, you're really building something bigger with an enterprise, which makes a ton of sense. Um, what was it like having 40 people on the phones selling Medicare all at the same time? Like most people can never comprehend that. Um, 
You got to have the technology. I mean, that yeah. was the that was the biggest thing. You got to have the technology to handle lead generation. You got to have best practices when you know your customer calls in, my customer calls in, I'm on the phone and all of that. Um, you you got to know how to build an office. You got to know how to have human resources. You got to know all of those things. Yeah. Um, it's it's a lot of fun, um, especially if you have the right people. Um, and so there's some. I've had a lot of ups and downs with that, and I'm getting a lot more strict on who I let into my world, uh, mm-hmm. which is, I guess, probably the most wisdom I can put on to anyone. Wow. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's chaotic. Uh, and I'll, I'll admit, I got, um, you know, it, I got it where it went a little bit above what I was capable of at the time, mm-hmm. uh, even with the technology and all that. And plus, on a personal note, the, why we had some problems there, um, you know, I had some some family issues and my, I lost my my dad's alive, but I lost him as a partner in my business. Mm. Uh, and so that suffered a lot because we we had a division of labor and it took a long time to catch up for that. And I trusted some bad people. So um, there were some problems in that. But um, rebuilding is like where you learn it. It's like what happened, what happened there and how can I uh, have just as much success with 15, 20 people I'm in love with. And I w- would, you know, lay in front of a bus for as I can with 40 and going to a hundred people and, and having chaos. Yeah. So I'll ask you if you like my new headline, because okay. I'm, I'm going to do a teaching on this, how to scale without the hail. <laughs> I love that. That's good. Right, sign, sign up for it because that's like the question I've been asking myself forever. These, these call centers are opening up uh, and they call them call centers because they come from the, you know, the Utah long distance company mindset or electric company mindset where they think put butts in seats and, you know, it's a call center and it's a contact center and we're going to have it. And then they try to do that with agents and then they get hundreds and hundreds of agents and they're all hating their life and they don't have anything that they can depend on and care about. Uh, they don't have stake or equity in anything that they're doing. Uh, and you know, their jobs change every day cause it's in that. Uh, and most people, and I found it myself, the harder, the bigger you get, the harder it is to keep a good workplace dynamic. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that's the question of my life. How do you, how do you have technology to solve all the day-to-day problems and keep things consistent? And then how do you have those, uh, routine things of what we do in those disciplines and the right people in place? And yeah. then I think if you can do that, there's some small group dynamics and stuff that you can put into that uh, that can really help. But I will go to my grave not wanting to have a 500 person organization if it's going to become like not fun to work at because I've been there before, too. I yeah. had over 200 people in my whole contact center at one time between, wow. prescription, lifetime, li- between prescription lifeline and Med- Medigap 360. I was going in 200 people in, in the office doing some very complicated things. That's and, some hefty payroll too, bro. That's some serious <laughs> hefty payroll. Yeah, um, it was. Um, but we help people get a billion dollars of prescriptions and, you know, we built a pretty good organization there uh, that did some good. But Yeah, it did a lot of good. I mean, I know I, I, I'm, I'm starting to understand a little bit of what you're talking about. I mean, I'm looking at my Slack and we've got 53 members of our, of our local Slack between the CA LLC and the security agent marketing company, not even including any of the stuff on my dad's side, you know? So, I mean, yeah, it's once you start adding a lot of people, it's a new dynamic, you know? I mean, it takes a lot more of these things you're talking about. One thing I'd love to pivot to, man, is um, how important is, I mean, you've talked a lot about technology and software today and how important it is in your agency. And most of the industry is outdated when it comes to tech and software. It's not as good as it could be. I know, I, I, I know you're working on a super project when it comes to this um, with that little logo and sure sells right behind you. Um, how right under Medicare Guru is there. Um, <laughs> wh- why is why is our industry so antiquated when it comes Anyone to anyone who's watched this? Do not go to insuresales.com and sign up for the for the uh, email list. Do not do that. Do not follow us on whatever social media you happen to be on. Make sure you don't set an alarm on your phone right now to go to all the social media places you can find and follow us on InsureSales and go to InsureSales.com and sign up because you you won't like it. You don't need it. Boom. Sorry. We can, <laughs> we can end it there. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, so insurance sales, man, insurance sales is my passion. It's my gift to the world. Um, uh, man, I was at this point in 2007, eight, where I had this opportunity to scale. I had, I was the first one in the Medicare supplement, uh, telesales model, invented this kind of thing, um, started doing sales. I thought I'd own the internet. So in that mm. point, we had success. We had, we had our own money. We invested a lot in software and technology to be ordered and be able to scale. Um, and so I had to build, uh, I didn't get to a hundred million agents or a billion dollars a year, like I thought, but what I did do over time was I built a pretty much turnkey front to back, uh, agency management system. Yeah. Does everything from quoting to universal applications to uh, to back end technology administration call center everything you can imagine in the call center. Uh, I demo when I demo uh, my platform to s- certain people uh, in an hour I can barely touch what all it does. But the bottom line is when an insurance agent sees it they say how do I get this because it does everything that everyone ever thought it should do because mm. it's built around the life cycle of the agent so. Insura sales is going to is going to is we're polishing it up right now, making it available to the public. It's basically going to be an agency in a box and you can sign up, wake up before you have your coffee in the morning, four o'clock or 24 seven sign up and you're going to have better technology and scalable agency technology uh, than all the big, big agencies in the country than anyone in the country. Wow. And uh, the majority of it's going to be free agency in a box. Yeah. And scalable. So every problem yeah. that I ever had scaling an agency for 20 years, you'll never have to. That's awesome. Um, because once you figure these things out, like I can figure out, I don't know. I mean, we could talk about anything, how to, how to integrate licenses and uh, tell you when to have your licenses and, and connect your appointments, to your licenses to a quote engine to tell you exactly what to do. If you're quoting that policy right now, if mm. you're contracted, not contracted, if you have a problem with the appointment in that state, Wow. 50 states. That's just like one little corner feature that I probably solved 10 years ago. Um, but I've solved it once and I haven't had to solve it again. Right. And so I can keep that for myself and say, I have a competitive advantage over everyone in the world, but that's silly because everything I've seen in the insurance business is that that stuff's in the way. We need salespeople talking to customers. Our industry needs to be, have salespeople talking to customers and all that yeah. stuff needs to go away. So if we solved it, why can't I give that to you to solve it? True. True. I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at the site. You said not to do it, which made me actually want to do it, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I'm at insurasells.com. There you go. I'm, cl- I'm putting my email in and I'm clicking notify me, right? Can someone make sure to take Cody Askins out of the email list? <laughs> Gosh, I want to know what, I, I want to know what's going on. Yeah, and if you don't like me, you don't like anything about me, just go ahead and click on there so you can spy on me and steal all my ideas. That's a- yes, yes, though I'm sure that yes, exactly. Uh, dude, I love the name. Where'd the name come from? That's like the smoothest, cleanest name I've ever seen. Insura sells like that's I couldn't I, believe it was available. I, I can't believe, believe it was available either. either. Yeah, I can't uh, believe it was so, available. Um, you know, the I had the organization Insura Prize, uh, which owned Medigap 360. And that was actually third string when you fill out the corporation form on the secretary of state office. When I was filing the corporation, it was like, I wanted like 360 insurance marketing or something like that. And there was someone on, there's a road here called 360 and it didn't work. Uh, and so it was the third choice. I was like insurance enterprise, insure prize. Uh, and that, and that's what they gave us and it stuck. Uh, and then we liked that. And it's like insure sales. Well, is it available? Yeah. And so we trademarked it and, Went went through. Um, so, yeah, and then we we got a lot of plays off that too. That'll be interesting for you guys to see. That's awesome. That's so good, man. I'm so excited for this because I know you. We've been. Well, um, I mean, I'm 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 excited for technology, man. Our 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 industry needs it. You know. Um, what what what's what's a what's a secret that you haven't shared yet to do with insurance cells that. It's okay to silently, secretly release just for our YouTube and podcast audience right now. Is is there anything? Oh, there's a lot. Um, it's going to come with a social media component. Ooh. 
Uh, so uh, there's a lot of good social media out there, all these social media platforms. When you go there, uh, they're a mess. Uh, if, you know, everything I try to do is get the agent to focus. Focus on what matters. Give them the information they need when they need it. I'm in Utah. Here's all the quotes. Where's outline of coverage? Here, send them that. Click this button. Send it to them. Da, 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 da. Uh, and what we found in talking to agents and all that is when we go on to Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever else, we end up getting distracted. Uh, and yeah. so what? I, so ensure a link. Uh, will be the name of the uh, of the platform that's integrated into our soft, software engine. And it's going to be a very clean, very tight social media org, uh, social media network uh, that's 100% work focused. Uh, so what I'm trying to do, um, honestly, I've done what I need to do in the insurance business. Uh, I have yeah. some other things I'd like to do. Uh, I'm having fun right now, uh, but before I get out of the insurance business altogether. I want to take my life's work here and I want to, I want to empower the independent agent uh, to, to work on a new plateau. So where they can do, where they can focus on what they're good at selling, training and yes. recruiting. Uh, Cause that's what we're good at and everything else is stuff us salespeople don't want to do. Right. So if I can bring the industry together and say, look, and like I said, it's going to be free. Everything's going to be free for you. Um, you can now have this uh, and hopefully we can come together as agents. Hopefully we can have a place that's not crowded, not owned by big tech, Silicon Valley, Wall Street, no interest over there. We can have our own platform where not only can we work with our customers and manage our commissions and leads and uh, integrated phone systems, all this other stuff, but we'll have a place to connect with one another and it'll be work focused. It'll be simple. And, you know, I think we can build a movement around empowering the agent in an industry that uh, is going the complete opposite way. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what have we not said that you would like to say today before we wrap this thing up? Because this is, this has been good, man. It's been fun. Yeah, um, I'm just I'm just proud to be associated with you. What you're doing with Eight Percent Nation is fantastic. Um, man, like I said, I've been waiting on you guys to come in and do this. I wish I was as good at some of the things that you're doing as you are. Uh, I'm very impressed with you and Justin. And some of the other people out there are doing this. Uh, and I'd like to get to know you guys more. Uh, I'm looking this this year. I'm looking for partners. I'm looking to expand. I'm looking to uh, find people who want to change the world in a good way. Um, and so, you know, knowing you is a good start to that. And uh, just just proud to be associated. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, man. Um, wh where, where else should they go again if they want to check you out, reach out to you guys, learn more? Don't go to insurasales.com for sure. <laughs> Yeah, the best way, uh, we're putting some polish on on the platform. It'll be coming out pretty soon. Um, and it's one of those things that the first people to sign up for the platform will be the first to know. Um, you know, we're not going to come on Cody Askins and announce before we do to our uh, before we do to our email list for sure. Yeah. Uh, so to get first advantage on that, yeah, go ahead and go to insuresales.com and sign up. Uh, you know, follow me on social media, find me, find Medicare gurus, find insurance sales. Uh, I love hearing from people who are looking to scale their business and work there. If you live in Cedar park, we got great, uh, mentorship opportunities at Medicare gurus as well. If you live in the North Austin Cedar park area. Uh, for now that's, that's staying local, but I love it. That's it, man. And they can, they can look you up at Brandon Todd on all the social platforms. I'm sure you'll find me. Yeah. You'll yeah. find. I, I, honestly, to tell you all this, I do need your help. Please go find me all these places. I'm not a social media guy. I haven't been one. Um, you know, I kind of sailed off in the sunset on the when I learned search marketing and all those things, and uh, kind of didn't like social media that much uh, yeah. for what it is. And I've seen where it's come and the, how good it can be for business if we clean it up. Uh, so yeah, help me get my profile out there so people know what we're doing. I'd appreciate it. I love it, dude. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate your your constant push to help the insurance industry be better. I'm excited to be affiliated with you and involved with you and everything we're doing, man. And I'm excited to see you drop some bombs from stage at 8% 2022 in Dallas in July. Appreciate you so much. Looking forward to doing it, man. I love it, brother. Thanks for being on the CA Power Players podcast. God bless and be great, everyone. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. So here's the formula. I'm gonna walk through five specific steps 
to help you gain more self-confidence and belief in yourself and really start to make this picture really clear. Okay, because when the picture gets clearer, right? When the picture gets clearer,